In the last two PGA Tour events, Tony Fino, you can see, won and crushed the field, won by 13 at, what was this? It was the 3M Open, and then just this past weekend, he won the Rocket Mortgage. You can see one by five strokes. So what does Tony do that you should do? Well, Tony swings from his heels, and so should you. So should I. That's my goal, to get better at that. So let's look at some pictures of Tony that I captured online. So through the ball, and you can see where he is. He's got zero pressure on his forefoot, and he has moved off of the lateral arch because you can see the bottom of his shoes. So in this case, you can see that he is almost on his heels uh, with his right foot and his lead foot. Now, amateurs are on their toes. So here's another picture of Tony on the heel through impact. Tony uh, on both heels through impact. <laughs> and what are amateurs doing? Up on the toes. So this is Tony in the fairway. I'm not sure if this is the 18th hole or not, but this is a par five where he was hitting driver six iron. So he had a smoke of six iron. So watch his feet. Watch his feet move. Now, when I do these screen captures, they're not, I can't perfectly line them up, but I get pretty close. But just watch his feet. How do your feet move as you go through impact? Now, some pros go up on their toes, but not remotely the way that the average amateur thinks that they go up on, on, onto their toes. So let's look at Tony on the tee for this hole, because he doesn't stay on the, his heel for his, his rear foot. So this is a dress. This is during the downswing, slightly coming off of his, his right heel. So now he's off of his right heel, but where is all the pressure? Left heel. Now the thing about this that you'll see in a couple seconds is that when I compare, we'll do it right now, his address. Now look how he lets his arms hang down. You can't do that. Tony has to get to make up, because if Tony was to stretch his arms straight out, he'd be down here somewhere. So he's got to get his body out of the way. He sure does. I mean, look at this. Can you do that? No. Now watch what happens with Tony. His head actually drops down. Most amateurs' head, heads go up. Why? Because they cannot get into this rotational lateral flexion move and use the left, the lead heel, I'm pointing to the lead heel, as the axis point of, of, of rotation. Amateurs simply cannot do that. When amateurs stand too close to the ball, the way, or stand to the ball as close as, as, as Fino and other pros do, they don't rotate on their heels. This is Hideki Matsuyama rotating on his lead heel. Amateurs go up onto their toes because we lack rotational movement skills. So what should you do? What you should do is, so here's Tony, and this is where most amateurs should end up. Otherwise, you'll be standing up. So I'll show you me pre uh, set up an impact, and you'll see what I mean. Now, it's not dynamic or professional, but I mean, my issue is dealing with the amateur golfer's dilemma. That's my approach. So we want to get rid of error factors. So one of the biggest error factors that amateurs suffer from is standing too close to the ball. Now, you listen to these, I mean, they're kind of dimwits. They'll argue that, and they argue it in the context of pros, not amateurs. I mean, amateurs can't do it. So for an amateur, so this would be me, set up impact. You can see slight rotation, and I did not stand up. Nothing, this looks nothing like Fino and, and the crew, obviously. Now I'm slightly off my rear heel, and I will be flat on my heel. And after impact, I rotate off of my forefoot slightly, which I showed in, in, in previous videos. Not perfect. I'm barely sniffing decent, <laughs> which is why I'm only a seven handicap. I'm still working on it. So let's look at the pros and their toes. Here is another, I mean, unbelievable great ball striker and bomber. So this is Will Zalatoris. So you can see literally almost no pressure here. This is just like barely touching. And he's off of his lead heel, and he's barely touching on his lead forefoot because he's going airborne. But when these guys go up onto their toes, they move backwards and they rotate. 
amateurs just go straight up or forward. So let's look at, and I've done other videos that show this, talking about these guys who press off of. So here's Justin Thomas, you can see, going airborne. But this is not the airborne that amateurs do or the, or the, the, the up on the toes. So what looks easier? What do you think you could learn how to do better? Stay on your heels or go airborne? Obviously, of course, you want to stay on your heels. So when I first started working on this, I realized that setup distance from the ball was crucial. But I did not understand the heels when I first started working on, on all this. I really only began to appreciate the unbelievable importance of the heels in January of 2021. So this is me off of my lead heel, off of my rear heel. Now, do I look remotely like Zalatoris? Well, no, I don't have these, this lateral bending skill through impact. All pros have unbelievable lateral bending. You want to see an unbelievable move? Just watch Joaquin Neiman or Tommy Fleetwood. Neiman, probably the most unbelievable lateral flexor out on tour. I mean, there may be more, but he's the one that I've noticed. Do you see any lateral flexion with me? No. What I have is forward momentum. I'm off my rear heel and I'm off of my lead heel, moving forward. You cannot rotate well if you're, on, if you're on your toes. And if you stand too close to the ball, now I don't, of course, but if you do, and if I did, I would look something like this guy. Where's the rotation there? You cannot rotate your pelvis or anything else if your stuff is standing up on your toes and have forward momentum that you're, that you're dealing with. So let's look at Tony. On, on the tee at the Rocket Mortgage. And so here's Zalatoris on the right, just getting ready to strike the ball. Watch Tony's feet and hands. You see that move there? How easy is that in comparison? Now, this is not easy for me to do, but to learn, whoops, to learn to, to move through the ball, you think you could learn uh, better what Tony's doing or going airborne like Zalatoris. And if you look at all the force plate stuff that people have done, uh, and I didn't realize this until I actually watched this video that certain pros, like this is this is Mike Malaska, certain pros have started to appreciate force plate activity during the actual swing. Now a lot of people focus on force plate force plates for long drive bombers, which is like a totally different thing than playing golf. And people, for whatever reason, they're I don't know, maybe their minds are slow. They don't capture that they're two different swing moves. Playing golf versus trying to hit the ball 400 yards where you would absolutely do different footwork. So uh, I would suggest that you at least go to this part in this video. So you can just obviously put into YouTube search this video and this is what you'll see from 22, uh, 12 to 2310. Force plate guy Ryan Groves is telling Mike Malaska that Mike, Mike swings. When Mike swings, he routes his center of pressure from his trail heel to his lead heel which is preferential for iron shots because this is the most consistent way to swing an iron through the ball. The same thing holds true for drivers for the average guy. Now, the reason why he's saying this is because if you're a long driver, it is not. You want to go airborne and press off and do the spin move. And all you have to do is watch Kyle Berkshire do this. It's pretty obvious. And I've discussed this, this spin move in previous videos about pros swinging, uh, going airborne. Further down, Malaska then pauses and says, and this is what he learned from the force play. So prior to that, I guess he didn't, he didn't really realize it, but he's telling us amateurs we should play from the heels rather than the toes. Immediately after that, force plate Ryan concurs. So then Malaska explains how he's using the force plate to teach amateurs to swing from their heels like the pros. He says that this is an entirely new sensation for amateurs, and it absolutely is. My first sensation of that was when not with force plates was when I took a lesson with Craig Shanklin at LPGA Daytona Beach where he had me hit high drives. Now you saw my previous with my blue shorts, blue shirt coming off my, t off, off my heels in the driver. He had me hit drives as high as I could, and that forced me to stay back on my, on my rear foot. And I'm like, totally different sensation. My brain didn't even sense what that was like until I was told to do that. So if you were to learn from a force plate guy like Malaska or somebody else, and they teach you how to move from your heels, you have to be wary that a lot of this is done without the club in the hands and without swinging the club. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is because Malaska, who's a pro, 
he can set up with his arms hanging straight down and the club out like most pros do and work his heels perfectly. Now pros, I don't know if Malaska understands this, but, but, but most pros do not get that amateurs cannot do this live with the ball because we lack rotational movement skills, which is why we must stand back further from the ball and get our brains to sense what it feels like to move from the heels, which is what I talk about here. This is the lateral lunge driver drill. This is the squatting driver drill, both of which are designed to teach us to swing from our heels and properly use our legs that can then be gradually, or if you're lucky, rapidly incorporated into your actual swing. So my suggestion would be to watch this video and watch all these other videos that suit your, your, your interest. The biggie is, I mean, really, they're all discussing the same general context. If you want to see unbelievable heel-hip action, <laughs> watch this little girl. Absolutely unbelievable. So check out those videos, and you can go right to Amazon if you wish, and you can type in The Amateur Golfer's Dilemma there, and, and the book will appear. You can see Kindle and paperback options.